Imagine waking up every morning to the smell of toxic air. Your chest tightens, and the thought of breathing deeply feels like a distant luxury. This is not a rare tragedy in some far-off disaster zone. This is daily life for the people of Konkoyo, Zambia. In this forgotten corner of the world, survival is a battle. A battle for clean air, a battle for water, a battle for life. My name is Beauty Mop, and I live in Kankoyo. I want to raise a complaint to the government because we are suffering here in Kankoyo. We are suffering from a water shortage. The water we use contains slag from the mines. As a result, our chests and lungs are damaged due to silica exposure. If you saw the water we use, its color is black, which is why we are experiencing continuous diarrhea. We cough non-stop and there is no medicine. We are pleading with the government to help us. The place where we get clean water is far from our homes, deep in the bush, away from our community. Sometimes we go three to four days without clean water and it only comes after five days. How can we survive like this? And Mopani Copper Mines has provided temporary water. But it's only for washing, not safe for drinking. Imagine water that cleans your hands but cannot quench your thirst. The people of Kankoyo are left to wonder how much longer will they endure this cruel reality? My name is Mary Bu, and I am raising a complaint to our government about carbon emissions. As you can see, I am pregnant. On the day the carbon emissions were released, my chest hurt a lot, and I couldn't breathe properly. We are asking the government to help us with this issue. In other countries, when carbon emissions are released, the government helps the people. Why can't you help us as well? One day, when the carbon emissions were released, a baby collapsed and had to be rushed to the hospital. The baby regained consciousness after receiving oxygen at the main hospital because the clinic was unable to handle the emergency. So we are suffering. Here, there is an 11-month-old baby who, on the day the carbon emissions were released, couldn't breathe properly. We had to rush the baby to the clinic where the nurse attended to the situation accordingly. We are asking the government to help us. There was another woman who died due to the carbon emissions. The emissions are so strong that elderly people cannot handle them. Even if you close all the windows and doors, they still enter the house. Our roof sheets are being destroyed by the carbon emissions. Mopani Copper Mines allocates money to be given to our community as part of the benefits related to the emissions they release. But we don't know why our government hasn't delivered the money to us. We haven't received anything. The toxic air from the nearby mines is slowly suffocating the elderly, weakening the children, and leaving mothers helpless. Babies collapse from the fumes, their tiny lungs struggling to find air. Every day is a gamble, wondering if the next breath will be their last. In previous years, carbon emissions were reduced to almost 0% when Mopani Copper Mines was under Glencore and Canadian-based First Quantum Minerals. 
However, in the past three months, since the new investor International Holdings Resources IHR came on board, the carbon emissions have become very strong, causing severe breathing challenges for the elderly and infants. We are appealing to our government and our president to seriously address this issue here in Kinkia. And then, there's the water or lack of it. Days stretch into nights without a single drop of clean water. The people walk for miles, hoping to find water fit to drink, while children grow weaker, burdened by the heavy containers they carry. Once again, we are facing water challenges. People are constantly moving around in search of water. The truth is, things are very difficult for us. Here where I am, I can only bathe once every three days due to the water shortage. Contaminated streams are their only source, a slow poison flowing into their homes, into the bodies, into their future. We are complaining because we are suffering from a severe water shortage. The children here are becoming stunted from carrying heavy water containers. We fetch water from a stream for cooking, drinking and washing, so we are essentially drinking contaminated water. The entire community is sick with diarrhea. We are pleading with our government to kindly help us. This house was once a beautiful home, filled with life and laughter. Now it stands broken, destroyed by the relentless underground explosions. What was once a sanctuary is now a crumbling reminder of what Konkoyo's people have lost. Even the ground beneath their feet is unstable. The constant rumble of underground explosives shatters the walls of their homes, their shelters slowly cracking under the weight of a promise unkept, a promise to relocate them, a promise to save them. They were promised help, promised relocation, but all they have now is broken homes, broken dreams, and broken hearts. Our roof sheets are destroyed, and beneath us is a 24-7 underground mine where explosives are detonated daily. This causes abnormal cracks in our homes and eventually these cracks will lead to their collapse. We are pleading with the government to help us, as they promised to relocate us from this place, but up to now, nothing has been done. My name is Julian, and we are asking the government to help us here in Kankoyo with proper sewage systems. We have suffered for too long. Our main market is located right next to these open sewers, where people are buying and selling food. In our compounds, broken sewage pipes are everywhere, and our young children are playing near them. We urgently need our government's help. But it's not just the air or water. There are no safe spaces here. The market where people buy their food is surrounded by broken sewers. Filth, disease, and despair lurk in every corner. This is not just Kankoyo's story, it's a cry for help, a cry to the world, to see them, to hear them, to remember them. These are lives at the brink, forgotten in the shadow of industry, lost in the silence of neglect. Another issue is the need for proper dumping sites. 
Our small community of Kankoyo is filled with filth everywhere, with people throwing garbage anywhere. We are pleading with the government to construct new dumping sites. How much longer can they wait? How much more can they endure? Will the world look away? Or will it rise to their aid? Kankoyo is crying. It's time we answered.